I've been tossing about in bed like a hot potato for at least an hour. There's a dull ache in my abdomen, a lump in my throat, and a feverish heat rising from up my spine and into my throbbing head. What do I do when there's nothing to do? I peeled myself from out of the bed clothes and dashed out of my hostel room, hardly caring to close the door behind me. On my way down the stairs, I realized I had also forgotten my slippers. I felt a great compulsion to keep walking and find a place with noodles, a trusty convenience store with tinging welcome bell and dreary counter lady. But maybe I just needed a necessity for my journey. To get midnight noodles was first a rational decision to fill my empty stomach from a day of refusing to eat. And second, yet foremost, an excuse for going somewhere to find respite in the gulf of the night, away from the oppression of my own thoughts. Day is off too filled with things, so nights ought to be filled with emptying, emptiness. What things fill our days? Sometimes contretemps, sometimes frenzy, sometimes loss, sometimes loneliness, sometimes energy, sometimes exhaustion. And when night comes, the cares of the day seep into your subconscious, keeping you awake. On such nights, the only compulsion in my body is to walk. I paced outside, barefoot, tiny rough pebbles impressed into soft soles, my heart racing, my thoughts flying like the wind in my hair, my mind a whirl, my mind a whirl. Night is a liminal time, minutes bleed into hours and hours bleed into moments outside time, to memories of the past, to thoughts of the future, to worries of the now. Time often flies without boundary. When does day turn into evening and evening into night? 7.15pm, the average hour for sunset in Singapore. But though the orb has sunk deep behind the horizon, it takes another hour for the sun's rays to leave the sky. The sky only darkens at 8.30pm, but it is filled again with another warm glow of street lamps, cars and blocks of speckled windows of light. Near midnight, the buses start slowing down and the cabs come to life. Children turn their lights out, adults turn their reading lamps on, home blinds are closed. Youth unlock their doors and seek pulsing lights in other places. Near 2.35am, the youth come back, stumbling out of cabs, arm in arm, collapsing onto floors, or if the lucky ones make it, into bits. 3 a.m. 3 a.m. is the quietest hour. Four a.m. is when the delivery vans start revving up and the buses of workers from Malaysia cross the causeway. 4.13 a.m. is when the morning birds start to call and 4.30 a.m. is when I decided to head back. 4.58 a.m. is the time before morning, and ideally by then I would have fallen asleep. Move into 5 a.m. and I realize that perhaps I have gone beyond tiredness, and my body will not close its eyes. It presses on to the next day, cranking up a system that will first run in ultra-high speed and shut down soon enough tomorrow. But for now, where am I floating to? I have left time behind. There is traffic still on the road. There is a man lying still on the ground. There is the wind still blowing as always. Stillness and motion are perhaps the same thing when motion is your only constant. Things always move still. And I find myself pacing once again in this dark night on a quest to find noodles. My wandering mind is in my travelling feet. I find myself on the road outside that leads into the expressway. How I got here, I do not recall, but f the further I walked along the expressway, the harder it was to turn back. I felt my pace slow from my initial feverishness, and I began to dally in my gait, 
letting wind from the occasional speeding vehicle push me onward. I walked in stumbles and skips, half carefree, half melancholic. My bare feet traced the pattern of light falling into shadow and followed the shadow dissipating into light. The spirit of travel is in my bones. Where the pavements take me, there I will go. Where the pavement stops, I will still continue. Bare soles moving from coarse pebble texture to damp lush grass to gooey mud to smooth cool concrete. My path became ephemeral, transient, lost. Walking like this in the night, I no longer leave traces of myself in this world. They always talk about the night as a time when nobody's watching. How nice it would be to go out like a hawk and be that lone observant watcher. I'm a watcher of movement. I see a bat, a million moths, a flickering lamp, a motorcycle, a light in the window, the night rider bus, the empty seats, taxis cruising by, gleaming green for available, a security guard's heavy breathing and quivery eyelids, an unstopped cigarette, slow rising fumes, a dropped cup, still spilling beer left forgotten on the floor, a light in the window, turned out. But in all my watching, I pray no one watches me. I walked and walked along the endless road, seeing nothing but shadows and scattered amber light. I stopped by a pavement, feeling the warmth of my breath mingling with the cold night air. I felt like a tea bag steeped in water, diffusing my woes into the ever darker, blacker night. The self becomes permeable and united with the elements, and it is suspended, upheld safely by a cupped vessel, womb-like. The womb is a void. The moon is also a void. Martha Graham's dance conveyed this hollowness associated with a woman's pain. She often cupped her hands as if encasing an egg, the symbol of fertility, but the negative space was what she longed to grasp. What does it mean to be empty? Being encased in this gulf of unseeing, I have become more attuned to myself as myself, a human. I feel like dancing. Travel is the dance of emptying the self to the world. First uncertain, next curious, then enthralled, finally feeling. The ground in the night will be my stage where nobody is watching. Only the street lamps and the pearl moon glow with appreciation. I can move however I like, no inhibition, no interruption, letting my body communicate the inarticulate self. The heart will desire hope. The mind will forget pain, torments, fear, uncertainty. The night is beautiful in this engulfing darkness. Like a vacuum, it takes you into a liminal zone. You lose yourself in timelessness and in the interstices of tiredness, languor and stasis. The night is so dark that there is nowhere else you can see behind or ahead of you. It no longer matters. It is escape into unknowing. But the unknowing is pleasant. I've danced past bus stops, quiet houses, sleepy taxi drivers, and arrived at an old building, a shell fated for demolition. There is a shop beneath it, a sterile neon life in darkened bare corridors. I am suddenly reminded of the task before my journey, to buy some noodles to fill my empty stomach. I walk in, announcing my entrance with a tinkling bell, but the shopkeeper doesn't look up from her phone. I bring a cup of noodles to the counter, pay up, and proceed to open its lid, pouring piping hot water into the vessel. I poked at the curled noodle lines with chopsticks, and they softened, buckling under my touch. I watch the steam rise gently, salted scents wafting through the sanitized shop. I leave and take a slow climb up the dusty steps of the decrepit building, noodles simmering in hand. Each step takes me further from oxygen, but they say up there is where the fresh air is. On the top floor, I find a ledge and I climb onto it, skyline flecked with lights like embers beneath my feet. My feet dangle precariously, yet freely. Tiny pebbles once pressed into my soles ease themselves from crinkled skin into dark night air. 
Off they fly, peppering the darkness like glistening stars. Their presence that once tingled my feet is now replaced by a cool night breeze, whispering sweet nothings through the gaps between my toes. Atop a vacant roof, with nothing below your feet but darkness, there is a temptation to hurl myself through the void. Yet, I fear the void immensely. I felt like I was staring into one of Anish Kapoor's Venta Black Vertigan sculptures. Venta Black, the darkest pigment used to colour his vortex sculptures, conveys an existential plunge into the unknowing of being. Tonight, like on many other nights, I have experienced sweet release of myself, but perhaps emptiness is not what I will content myself with. What does it mean to be alive? Perhaps in my hands lie the answer. An empty cup and a full belly.